Hello YouTube, this is The Bucket coming at you today with my Radom P64 pistol that I picked up from Blitzkrieg Firearms. Now, the P64 pistol <clears throat> was made by Fabrika Brony in Poland. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the pistol. So, at the end of the 1950s, the Polish military or military complex had decided the Tokarev TT pistol had to go. They wanted to go with a new pistol a blowback design, kind of like the Makarov pistol that the Russians had used, and they wanted it to be chambered in the 9x18 Makarov pistol. They went ahead and had some designers design a new pistol, and they landed on this pistol, the pistol that would become the P64, or the ZZAC pistol. This pistol was obviously inspired by the, by the Walther PP and PPK pistols and has some definite feels of the Russian Makarov pistol as well. They went ahead and to, tapped the Fabrika Brony plant in Poland. This is often referred to as the Radom because Fabrika Brony is located in Radom, Poland. As most gun collectors and gun enthusiasts will know, Fabrika Brony is famous for making the Polish Double Eagle pistol or the Viz 35. These are extremely gorgeous, well blued, well manufactured pistols that were used prior to World War II by the Polish military. Now, in, the, in October of 1939, the Poland had fallen to the Germans and the Germans had experienced these pistols and <clears throat> were kind of in love with them. And they uh, found the Fabrika Brony plant and started having them produce the Viz 35 pistol like this three lever that I have here. This is one of my absolute uh, most beloved guns in my collection. I love these so much. And they served very, very well for the Germans in World War II. They were really well sought after by paratroopers and SS troops alike. And at the fall of Germany in World War II, these guns ceased being produced. And they started to produce the TT pistols like this one right here. Now, this is an actual Russian TT uh, or Tokarev pistol. The Russians and the... Polish ones made by Fabrika Brony have these really unique plunge cut uh, slide serrations. So the ones that you see in the United States that have these kind of markings, almost all of those are going to be Fabrika Brony or Polish Tokarevs. Now, these uh, served really, really well for the Polish military from the fall of the Germans all the way through the 1950s. But these pistols had some problems that they really wanted to kind of go away from. One of which being they don't really have a safety. Now they have a half cock, but those really isn't a functional safety, especially for a standing military that's probably not going to do a lot of training with their handguns. So they decided that they were going to move on from these and decided to go with this pistol right here, the P64. Now, the overall specs of this, the length is going to come in at 6.3 inches. The overall barrel length is going to be 3.3 inches. Its width is going to be 1.1 inches. Its height is going to be 4.6 inches. And it's going to come in at 22 ounces. The markings on this pistol, you're going to go ahead and you're going to see right here is going to be, let's see if I can get that a camera, a circle 11 marking right here. That is the Fabrica Brony plant identification number. <clears throat> you're going to see that it's going to have serial numbers on the slide and on the frame. Mine here is BS and it ends in a triple seven. You know, the British military had 007. Maybe the uh, Polish military had a triple, uh, lucky triple seven. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to see the year marking here. Mine was made in 1975. Um, as far as markings, you're going to have um, a small marking that was de de denoted uh, something from probably the military, which branch ended up having this particular pistol. You're also going to see it's going to say right here, 9mm. That means 9mm Makarov, not 9mm Luger. And then it's going to have in quotation marks P64. <clears throat> These guns are all import marked. Uh, I really like that Blitzkrieg Firearm put a really, really small import mark right here that just says Blitzkrieg, and then it says Michigan right there. 
Those are gonna be all the markings that you're gonna find on the pistol as far as controls go. You're gonna end up with a safety decocker. So let's go ahead and take out the six round detachable box magazine. And then you're gonna see that this is a double action, single action firearm. This just looks exactly like a Walther PP, Walther PPK. Go ahead and pull that down. It's going to drop the hammer safely. And with the lever down, it is gonna completely make that trigger dead. You can then go ahead and pull the safety forward and you're gonna end up with one of, if not the longest, most heavy, miserable double action triggers ever. That is one of the real downsides of these particular firearms. That double action trigger pull is heavy. It's to the point where if I get really way in there and not put it on the pad of my finger, you can see that I can get that trigger to go, but man, it is long, it is heavy, it stacks. Now, once you do that, you are gonna have a really pretty decent three and a half to four pound trigger. It's a little spongy, but not bad at all. Now, people ask all the time, they say, man, what is this just a design flaw? Well, we can we have to remember that at, at this time, they went from a pistol that had no safeties, that probably had some occurrences of some accidental discharges, maybe even some soldiers getting injured by having a gun with no safeties. That pendulum swang, swung, and they ended up going with some really pretty intense uh, features like this super long double action trigger pull. <clears throat> As far as the magazine capacity, six plus one, that seems pretty low to us today. But at the time, that's what they really thought they wanted. They wanted soldiers that were gonna be carrying a rifle that didn't need a lot of extra weight, a lot of extra things to be cumbersome for them to carry. And they figured, let's go with a smaller magazine capacity and a really pretty small pistol. So those are the breakdowns of this particular pistol. I will tell you they have very, very small sights. There is a little drift right here that you can drift this and there is really no contrast. So I had the big baby bucket, put a little green fingernail polish on there and that makes it a lot easier to pick up that front sight for sure. As far as disassembling and maintenance for this pistol, again, you can see the the stylings of the Walther PP PPK. You just pull back on this trigger guard right here and then you push it off to the side of the frame. Then you can go ahead and pull the slide all the way back to the rear, lift it up, and you can see that um, pinned in barrel right there. I do like some of this military surplus pistols because you know, it's kind of seems strange for a lot of us, but a lot of these pistols just did not get fired very often. So when I picked this particular pistol up, the rifling is super, super strong, and it's going to make for an absolute awesome shooter. You can go ahead and with it disassembled, you can go ahead and clean the pistol out, oil it up. To reassemble it, you just do the same thing in reverse and then you put the trigger guard back in, do a function check, make sure that that trigger is dead on uh, the safe mode, and then you can go ahead and check for the gun operating the way that it's supposed to. As far as the way it feels in the hand, it feels really pretty good. I love the way that these guns feel in the hand. I love that the way that they look. I went ahead and I bought this package. So this package came with a nice leather holster, really in pretty good shape. And you know, you can definitely tell that it was used by the Polish military. It does come with two magazines which is awesome. At some point in time, one of the uh, branches that used it electro penciled on serial numbers. At one point in time, Blitzkrieg Firearms had these where you could get it with matching magazines. I missed out on that, which was sad for me, and mine did not come with matching electro penciled magazines, but that's okay. Again, two magazines is pretty neat. Again, you get the holster. These fit really, really well in here. They operate all up the way that they're supposed to. Let's get that little tab on there. Oh, awesome. And it even came with a cleaning rod. So you, I don't know why I would ever use this cleaning rod, but it's pretty neat that you get it. So as far as shooting impressions go, uh, this gun it ran flawlessly. It chewed up everything I got. I just had some Mezco brass case and I had some steel case uh, silver bear. Everything ran just like a champ. Now the double action trigger pull on these is notorious. That 24 pound 
spring is just going to be really hard to get used to. I went ahead and went to Wolf uh, Springs and got a new Hammer Spring, 17 pounds. Hopefully that'll be coming in shortly. Um, I had put a little bit of contrast on that front sight, helped to pick it up because these sights are really, really small. I was not, I was a little bit of the litter box today, not super great. This first uh, hole right here was uh, just me pulling that, and I was shooting a little to the left today, but I was hitting steel at 20 yards. Anything ranging from 10 inch steels to 24 inch steels without any problems. The recoil is a little bit much. The 9x18 is a lot for such a small pistol. Even 22 ounces doesn't soak up too much of that recoil. But again, it was a natural pointer. Uh, I, you know, I could get that third pinky on that grip. Just had to hold on tight. And as I got a little bit more used to it, as I spent a little bit more time uh, thinking about it, you know, I wasn't having any any problems getting this uh, gun to shoot on target. Maybe for a new shooter, even though it's small in the hands, you might this might be a little bit more kick than they want. So just to get a little used to it, take a little bit of time with that, and I think you should be fine. Again, this thing was just a pleasure to shoot. It's such a such a neat pistol for sure. Now a lot of you guys want to ask, what are the uh, positives? What are the negatives? So the positives are this gun is small, it's compact, it's very very narrow. I like the fact that it's a double action, single action in this world of striker fired polymer for, uh, firearms. There are a lot of people out there that like that added protection of a double action, single action trigger pull. The Fabrica Brony uh, P64s are known for being extremely reliable. These guns just run. They run really, really well. And, you know, you're going to have a lot of fun taking this to the range. Negatives, again, you're going to have that absolutely horrific double action, single action or sorry, that horrific double action trigger pull. Oh, that's pretty, pretty rough. Uh, the small mag capacity is going to turn some people off. And the sights, they're not really easy to pick up on. So you say, to, you say to yourself, the bucket, why would I want to pick up this pistol today? Well, not too long ago, almost every home had, you know, cool collectible pistols that people had brought back from in the war. Like this Viz 35 three lever, they had them in rigs with holsters, with magazines. And fathers, grandfathers taught their young um, children, their young grandchildren how to shoot and could experience history together, having it in their hand, going to the range and experiencing that together. Well, for a lot of us, you know, the way that laws have gone and the way that uh, war prizes go, most people aren't getting those types of things anymore. And if you wanted to get a rig like this Viz 35 with a holster and a couple of mags, it's going to set you back three or four thousand dollars. Not even that long ago, you could still pick up a lot of these guns on the collector market from like collectors firearms and stuff like that. And they were really pretty inexpensive. But as most of these military surplus pistols are starting to drive up, dry up, the values of these are going up dramatically. So what a lot of people do is they see something like this and they say to themselves, well, wait a second, I can get a holster, I can get two magazines, I can get a cleaning rod, and I can get something that I can go ahead and shoot with my son, my grandson, and have something that I can pass down with. It can be history that I hold. It can be history that I interact with. That's super, super cool. And while it's not super inexpensive... $400 for that package, I mean, in my opinion, that's cooler than an MNP shield. And while it may not be as easy to use as some polymer frame firearms, this is going to be something that you're really, really going to enjoy. And if you go through a company like Blitzkrieg Firearms, I, you know, the condition of these are really, really awesome. You know, it's not rough. They went ahead and did really, really small importation markings, which means that it's history that, you know, doesn't have big giant banners on it. I think anybody that's looking to go down that mark or sorry, that road to get something a little bit different, this is a really cool option that you have. And, you know, it's going to be something that is going to be different than your Glock 43. It's going to be different than your SIG P320. And it's going to be a different experience when you go out with it. So... I think it's something that some people should definitely consider. So I want to thank everybody for uh, supporting the channel, all the likes, the comments, the shares. They're really, really appreciated. And as always, you stay classy, YouTube. Little baby bucket, do you want to live in California? No. Why? Because I'm not a 
compliment. 